looking to move to Spain, it can be incredibly challenging for two reasons. The first is that you need to get your visa together, whether that be a student visa, a work visa, you name it. The second is that you need to organise your residency card. Now, I was lucky enough to move to Spain during the transition period for Brexit, which meant that I actually didn't need to get a visa, but I still had to organise my residency. And just as a heads up, anyone staying in Spain longer than three months needs a residency. Which was still a huge pain. And in short, I had to get a NIE, Número de Identificación de Extranjero, a foreign identification number, and then a TIE, a Tarjeta de Extranjero, a foreigner card, basically. And I did this all myself without a lawyer, and the process literally took about four to five months. As I started in about September, October time, and I got my, I finalised the whole thing, got my TA card in February. And it was literally such a painful experience, hanging on to that stress in the back of my mind. Once I'd managed to complete the process, a huge weight was lifted off my shoulders, and I was able to enjoy my time a little bit more than previously. So as I mentioned, I did this process all by myself and the majority of the time I had no idea what I was doing. Now I was lucky enough to be going through the same process with my friends so we were all gathering little bits of information here and there, gathering a little bit of information from one another, mostly from Facebook groups. So basically from people who also had no idea what they were doing and were just winging the process like us. And I'm not going to lie to you, all three of my friends, we had our NIA appointments at similar times and we all had completely different experiences. Also, by the way, this may get confusing with NIA and TA, I was also very confused. So I've put the definitions and stuff down the bottom so that you don't get confused. So we, we all bought the exact same documents from what we saw on the email inviting us to our appointments after we'd filled out the initial forms, but also information that we had gathered from Facebook as people were told that they should actually have brought in things that I wasn't mentioned on the initial email invite which was infuriating obviously because why would you not include it on the initial email I think we brought like our passport our work contract because we were there for work so we had to prove why we were there a housing contract and two forms that we were supposed to fill in beforehand uh, one of my friends had a smooth sailing appointment and she wasn't asked to send over anything else any additional information I was told that I needed to send over my boarding pass to show proof of when I had actually arrived, which delayed my application even further. And it really annoyed me because my housemate wasn't asked to do the same. Hers was fine, but at the same time, my housemate was asked to send over a padron, which is a specific certificate that proves you lived where you say you live, as they wouldn't accept her housing contract, but they accepted mine. A certificate that we hadn't even managed to get yet because there were no appointments available for like three weeks time. Because probably everyone who had just moved to Spain to be a language assistant or a student were all probably scrambling for the exact same appointments. But they accepted my house and contract anyway. It was just, it was just really absurd. And it was incredibly stressful. Also because everything was in Spanish. And I can speak a decent amount of Spanish. But when it comes to bureaucracy and bureaucratic, la and bureaucratic language, is a hard word to say, best believe I am not the best. So what can be said of this is that Spain's bureaucracy can be a little bit of a mess at times and not very organized and that just makes the process incredibly stressful that at times i even did consider getting a lawyer and i had actually seen people recommending specific lawyers on facebook i actually remember this one guy he was crossing regions and crossing borders to work with this lawyer which for me just seemed crazy so but that was my that kind of stuck as to what my idea of using a lawyer would be like so I didn't really consider looking any further into it because it seemed like it was just going to add more stress on to an already stressful situation. But looking back, if I did the proper research, it probably would have saved me a lot of time and stress. And I would have probably been able to enjoy my time in Spain a little bit more without that nagging stress simmering at the back of my head. And if I had to move now and I had to go with a visa, getting a lawyer would definitely be something that would be on the cards for me just because there's even more work than I already had to do uh, and that was a lot <laughs> so because I don't I didn't really know many law firms when I moved to Spain I wanted to save you guys some time to recommend one that won't have you crossing borders and regions just to get access to them and their services so pro Spain legal consultancy has services that extend further than just immigration 
but for the purpose of this video and moving to Spain, I'll cover the immigration bits. So they cover all types of visas, student visas, even non-lucrative, which is moving to Spain as a resident without a work permit, and even enrolment into language schools, and so on and so on. But they even guarantee that you will be successful in your application if you apply for a student visa. Now obviously you have to be a student in order to apply to be a student visa, that's common sense but and to prove that you're going there to study um but if you do that then they can guarantee that you will be successful and of course with the rest it's based on your application but they help you with the process but why should you use a lawyer well in this instance you save time and stress as you can see with my history <laughs> and with using this firm for example you literally don't have to lift a finger apart from giving them your documents and so that they can fill out forms for you. It means that you don't have to go to the present your appointments to get your visa, your NEA, your TA because they do it all for you. <laughs> Which is great if you don't speak Spanish because I'm telling you the people at those appointments do not speak English. Well, maybe they do now but when I went they did not speak English at all and if some of them if you didn't understand them first time, they were so rude. I was like, what is this? And many times I even came back home with McDonald's as comfort food to comfort myself from the experience I had just returned from, which is, sounds so lame, but it's the truth. But I actually don't think that's right. I think people who work in immigration should definitely speak more than one language, whatever the country that is. But that's not the case here, so you just have to live with it and find ways around it. But back to the firm, because they do have direct and professional access to the immigration offices, it also means that your application will get priority with them uh, and it will be processed a lot faster than if you do it by yourself. So the four or five months it took me, it could have been a lot quicker than that. And again, it means that stressful is not in the back of your head for so long, meaning you can enjoy your time. And you won't be checking your website every day trying to find out whether your application's been accepted or not. Funnily enough, actually, the friend whose NEA appointment went through smoothly, her application hadn't been accepted in time. And I think there's about a six week window for it to be accepted or you have to start the process again. And hers just was, in was just incredibly delayed. And she had her appointment even a few weeks before us. So I don't know why her was so delayed, but I don't know. One of my concerns about using a lawyer in Spain was that I thought that they would only speak Spanish. So if I was already having trouble with the bureaucratic offices, how was I gonna explain my situation to a lawyer? But this firm is an international company, so it speaks many languages, and of course, one of them is English. So if you want to check out more from the firm to help you in your process of moving to Spain, check the link in my description, which will take you through all of the services that they can offer you. Also, I hope that if you decide not to use a lawyer that this video didn't stress you out at all. I just wanted to give you guys the reality of moving to Spain as well as all the good bits, because although it is incredibly rewarding, and you do forget about the pain of bureaucratic of bureaucracy after you've done it, probably because your brain your brain is trying to block it out. <laughs> it was just a nightmare, and I have to be honest about that. And I'm sure if you speak to anyone who's moved, I can guarantee you that 99% of people would say the same. But just because it was a nightmare, it does not mean it's impossible. So just bear that in mind. But I would recommend checking through your pros and cons of using a lawyer to do the or doing the legal bits yourself, because of course they're going to be these pros and cons are going to be different for everyone, including myself. I do hope this video helps you, and I will see you in the next video.